majority leader was speaking to, uh, as I have done in other uh, bills that have come before this House that were essentially uh, regulating matters that I believe are devolved functions. Number two, Mr. Speaker, I've had very uh, interesting conversations with young people in this country and other stakeholders in the country. One of the things that I tell people who uh, claim that uh, they are not interested in politics uh, is the specter of some of the things that have been said by the majority leader here, that somebody is holding a bill, a law in his hand that is going to regulate your business. And he starts by saying he doesn't understand that business. This is why I encourage people to look very carefully at the people they send to the Houses of Parliament because at the end of the day, if you have somebody with a lawmaking power who does not understand your business, it is very easy for that person to legislate you out of business. And I am sure that uh, uh, the Senator for Nakuru understands exactly what I am saying. I have very serious concerns, Mr. Speaker, about the sort of country that we are trying to create here. We are creating essentially a nanny state, a state whereby we are all considered children who need to be looked after every single hour of the day. What we eat is regulated, what you drink is regulated, where, how you sleep, where you sleep, who you go out with, how long you party. I mean, we are becoming too much. We are regulating everything, Mr. Speaker. At the end of the day, there is a reason why there is an age of majority. If I want to go for a looter, Senator Karen Nyam, I am a grown-up spending my own money. What business do you have as a legislator in my life? Mr. Speaker, this is one of those other legislations. And I want to speak as a person who has won money on numerous occasions on account of Arsenal losing. Mr. Speaker, I have also, I want to confirm that I have placed a bet on this tonight's game against uh, Bayern Munich because I know as we are going to lose and uh, so as uh, a friend of uh, members of this house I encourage you to make a little money today because Arsenal is going to lose again. Mr. Speaker. Senator Sifuna, there is a point of order from Senator Karen Yam. Close in. Mr. Speaker, I have in this house presented my issue with Aluta. It is about our young people. Is the senator for Nairobi in order to imply that I'm trying to regulate grown-ups from partying whenever they want to? <laughs> and also, uh, in the house, Mr. Speaker, because the comeback that we are about to put up, he will, he will silence him forever. Yes, Senator Sifuna, you cannot uh, bring issues uh, to do with us without bringing a substant substantive motion. Substantive motion. Proceed. Mr. Speaker, you want me to bring a substantive motion to discuss Arsenal? Uh, but the, the point that I was making, uh, Mr. Speaker, and this is something that uh, uh, the majority leader alluded to, is that some of these things are personal choices. Although this facility is available for everyone. Not everybody engages in gambling. But what we should not do, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I have seen this uh, very worrying trend, where we want to demonize and criminalize everything, uh, so that uh, uh, Shere is being painted as something that is very evil, and somehow that it is targeting young people. Mr. Speaker, we have laws on our books to prevent operators of a club, just like this law that we are debating this afternoon, it has restrictions on the age limits of the people who can participate. There is a restriction on the age of persons who can enter into a club in Nairobi or anywhere else, Mr. Speaker. So that having the rules there should be sufficient for us not to criminalize the activities. We are trying to make sure that the activity is conducted in a manner that is safe, in a manner that does not endanger the lives of people or in, in fact jeopardize uh, the future of young people. Mr. Speaker, I went through the fourth schedule to ascertain that, in fact, this is a function that can properly be undertaken by the national government. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the submissions by the majority leader, I think that is one of the speeches by the majority leader that has earned him applause from our side, because he has reinforced things that we've been saying about legislation that comes before this House. Not least amongst them is the need for leaders, members of parliament and members of the committees to consider bills before passing them, to read bills before passing them. 
I was very happy to hear him say that because we've been sounding like madmen, some of us, when we insist that in this house we must consider bills, we must read bills, and debate them, be given sufficient time to debate them. So I'm very happy that uh, the majority leader uh, is echoing those sentiments, Mr. Speaker, so that we can be able to uh, uh, debate and consider these bills. I also don't know where uh, some of us get the moral authority, uh, Mr. Speaker, to condemn the young people who have also learned from us that uh, money can be made in easy ways. We have developed a society, Mr. Speaker, that encourages easy money. And we cannot be the ones to condemn people for placing a bet, Mr. Speaker, for trying their luck. So all we need to do as a house is to make sure that the activity is properly regulated. And uh, I was trying to read through this bill and compare it with the existing legislation on, uh, on betting lotteries and, and, and gambling to try and see what the problem or what differences there are. But I wasn't catching too many of those uh, uh, differences, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me start uh, my analysis of the bill with uh, Section 5. One of the problems I've always had with some of the legislation we pass in various sectors, Mr. Speaker, is this requirement of local ownership. It has been argued uh, for and against. I am a strong believer that, Mr. Speaker, you end up uh, unknowingly dissuading people from investing in your own country if you put up restrictions such as this. So if you look at uh, uh, Section 29 of the bill, Mr. Speaker, there is a requirement that for you to be given a license to conduct uh, uh, this gambling business in this country, 30% of your company has to be ceded to a local person. It is very difficult. I remember uh, the discussions during uh, the Energy Committee inquiry into uh, the high cost of electricity. Mr. Speaker, it is not always easy to find somebody who has the same vision as you in business, to find somebody who is willing and ready to put up uh, the resources that are required for you to be able to uh, undertake that business. And Mr. Speaker, for you to find somebody who will not abandon you along the way. I think you have seen in the betting industry, I don't want to mention names, but there are famous uh, companies that started this, uh, especially the online sports betting, that have ended up disintegrating, uh, we have seen, because of the squabbles amongst shareholders, who were basically yoked together uh, against their will because the law requires that you have a certain shareholding uh, that is local. Mr. Speaker, you go to uh, Section 68, uh, 2 of the bill, and this is something that uh, Senator Charerge was worried about. I can see that uh, it has provided uh, that a person licensed to carry on online gambling activity shall conduct activity under a gambling control system approved by the authority, and that the authority cannot approve a system under that subsection unless you as a licensee provide, amongst other things, at uh, subsection 2G there, responsible advertising. So what he was concerned about is something I think the legislation has already uh, anticipated and provided for. Then, uh, Mr. Speaker, at section 69 of the bill, uh, there is a definition on when the online transaction begins and when it ends. And there is a number of days, a minimum number of days that is provided for, for your payout to be made. So, Mr. Speaker, the concerns by Senator Chararge that you can actually win money and the people or the uh, betting firm refuses to uh, remit that money is something that has also been anticipated in this particular bill and I believe it has also been properly taken care of. Uh, I would want uh, someone to explain to me the rationale uh, of the minimum betting at uh, Section 71, uh, that in fact the minimum bet has been set at 20 shillings, Mr. Speaker, and that is inclusive of uh, a saving component. If you bet 20 shillings, there is an amount of money that is set aside as savings for you uh, by, the, by the ministry, I, I guess, or the, by the authority. And Mr. Speaker, that the minimum bet is uh, set at 20 shillings. I, I would want uh, some, some clarification from the committee, I think, uh, during the debate on what uh, that is about. Mr. Speaker, if you go to section uh, 72, subsection 3, you will see what I was telling you about uh, uh, the need for us not to 
appear as if there are gaps already in legislation uh, when it comes to protecting young people. If you read section 72, subsection 3, you see that an operator is made to require proof of age of majority prior to the registration of every player. So you cannot register as a player on an online betting site without having produced proof of your being of age of majority. So Mr. Speaker, for me really, uh, other than some of the concerns that have been raised uh, by the majority leader on the uh, adequacy of the fines for some of the penalties that have been prescribed, I believe that generally this is one of the few pieces of legislation that have come for this House that I have minimum uh, problems with and that in fact, Mr. Speaker, I want to encourage uh, us not to be in the business of demonizing everything and making everything appear unholy and ungodly, uh, especially when it comes to choices that are being made by grown people. Uh, if indeed uh, the feeling of Parliament is that uh, a person of the age of 18 or, or any other age uh, should probably not be exposed to some of these things, Mr. Speaker, it is very much in order for us to require even a higher age. If you say uh, somebody uh, to participate in gambling has to be above 30 or 40, it is possible for us as a house to do this. But for me, I don't condemn without asking myself, what are the systemic problems that have given root to some of this abuse of this, some of these practices and uh, some people ending up even addicted uh, in, in some of these things? Mr. Speaker, the underlying socio-economic factors are in fact the things that we as a house and leaders have to, uh, have to address. Somebody who has finished university 10 years ago has never got an opportunity to be employed anywhere. They have degrees, they have all these things. They need to eat, they need a place to sleep. Who are you who has failed to provide that environment where they can uh, sustain themselves and pay for their expenses? Who are you to judge that person when they decide that if I make 50 shillings, I'm going to uh, put 20 shillings on us and losing this afternoon? Mr. Speaker, it is not right. For us as leaders, especially when we have not been able to address the socioeconomic challenges of our young people, to then judge people and say, hey, these people who engage in gambling are, uh, are, are, are evil. Who are you who has never uh, provided any opportunity for people to be employed? To judge a person who has nowhere to go on Monday uh, morning, Mr. Speaker, there is no office for them to go. If they decide to go and listen to reggae the whole day at a loot, who are you? Who are you to judge that person and say, oh, this is something that is evil and should be stopped? I think we need to end the hypocrisy in these things. As leaders, let us address the underlying socioeconomic issues, first of all. Because a person who is meaningfully employed, like I can see a uh, commissioner there, a uh, commissioner's uh, diary, uh, Mr. Speaker, is full from morning to evening, 24 days, uh, 24 hours a day and, and, and seven days a week, 365 days a week. And uh, if, if we factor in the difficult travel schedule, uh, Mr. Speaker, she has no time. She has simply no time to engage in some of this. She can't be seen at a looter because she has work to do. So let us focus on the socioeconomic issues, Mr. Speaker, and then we can then uh, talk about all the other issues. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute.